Let's get started on the issues of the day. Thank you so much for uh, staying with us, everyone. Today, some eminent Nigerians have again reinforced the clamor for the restructuring of Nigeria. From different regions of the southern Nigeria, the leaders are asking for a proper framework in Nigeria's political system. Take a listen to their stance. Staying together, working together, building this nation together is the only viable way to go. Now, when you have elders in any society who have seen many things, who have experienced many things, one of the benefits that the nation has is that these elders can take the wisdom of the years and the experiences they have and say, if we want to continue to have a peaceful, productive country, then these are the things we should do. These are the things we should avoid. Just like some people will say that when you hear a call ring loud and clear, there is definitely something about that call and not a voice. On the need to unite uh, and the unity in the country in the midst of the ethnic tension, the governor of River State, Nguyen Samwike, has called for national integration and peaceful coexistence among ethnic groups. The governor had a meeting with the leaders and members of the Muslim community in Port Harcourt emphasized the importance of living as one united people. There is no put notice to anybody. Do you understand me? All of us will live together. All of us will go to anywhere we want to stay in Nigeria and stay and do our, and carry out our businesses. Whether you are from Noto, you are free to stay here. Whether you are from here, you are free to stay in the north. Who must be our brother's uh, keeper? Well, that's another voice there. In all of these clamor and the recent uh, loud call for restructuring, perhaps uh, one critical area yet to be properly explored is how the restructuring will happen. Well, you may be thinking of that too. Well, let's get an insight into that. Joining me to discuss these issues uh, tonight is a lawyer you know too well on this platform, Mr. G.T. Ogunye. Many thanks for coming on the program, Mr. Ogunye. Mm -hmm. And then also a politician and a former governorship right. candidate in River State, Mr. Tonye Prinzue. Many thanks for coming on the program. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, gentlemen, uh, it's a critical moment in Nigeria's history, uh, and uh, for, perhaps from a politician point of view, let me let me ask you this: You've been in the private sector, you know how things work. Interestingly, you're also from the South Side region, where we've heard this kind of clamor come several years down the line, and we've seen people uh, agitation on the streets several times. But does it strike you that we have not really hit the court yet? Of course, I mean, it's, um, I think it's common knowledge. You don't even need to be a politician. Every Nigerian knows that restructuring, um, whatever you want to call it, uh, is a clamor that has been on for years. Uh, many people would say it's been on since 1958, uh, when you talk about the Willings Commission and so on and so forth. So it's without question, our constitution does not reflect we as a people. It says we the people, but we all know that we the people never got together to put that constitution together. So just as our political parties are flawed, our constitution is flawed. The foundation of the country is flawed. Restructuring is needed. The question is, what does restructuring mean? Uh, you hear restructuring there. You hear restructuring here. Restructuring is like 0 to 100. If you go from 0 to 1, you've restructured. But is that enough? Or do you go to 100, which is cessation? So there's a lot of wiggle room in between. And I think the politicians need to take advantage of that. The fact is that people are saying restructuring, but they've not said exactly what they want. Mm. They're expecting leaders to give the direction, and if, they will. If you look at most of the people who are talking, apart from those whom the, 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 the acting president has been talking to, we've not really seen mainstream politicians in the fray uh, joining the, the, apart from, uh, they're in groups, but uh, the people, the leaders that we see, whether in the north and the south, most of them are not politicians. Most of them are eminent, uh, uh, yeah. distinguished Nigerians in their own right. Uh, but as it stands now, the restructuring looks like a house that, that is cracked up there and the foundation is faulty. How do you bring it down? Where do we start from, from the, from the, from the, uh, from the surface, uh, looking at it from the yeah, top? It would be good to point out that politicians are also speaking. Um, Atiku has spoken. Asiwaju has spoken. 
recently uh, APC leaders from the Southwest spoke, and I understand that um, 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 their PDP counterparts also spoke. So the truth of the matter is politicians are speaking. Um, the question is going to be what form restructuring takes. I think APC would be wise to acknowledge that unless they address restructuring or the proponents of restructuring in a manner that will comfort them, uh, they may lose the next election. Interesting. So I believe that uh, restructuring is firmly on the agenda. It's something that needs to be addressed. But uh, nobody has said this is the direct form it will take. So because they've left you that wiggle room, take advantage of it and put something together that will appease people. Because unless we do that, we'll continue, as somebody said, sleepwalking into disintegration. That seems to be a very strong advice to the government at the center. Um, Mr. Ogumi, legally speaking, how do you restructure Nigeria in such a way that you do not upset the democratic and the political structure that we're running? Is there any way that we can go about this it? This has been, you know, we are indeed addressing something that has been addressed ad nauseum, that has been stated and restated and restated again. I recall that um, at the outset in 1998-1999, when Abiola just died, and Jackson was insisting on a sovereign national conference, uh, the recommendation was that the political system, the democratic system, could stay just as we had the situation in Benin Republic, when we had a conference there, uh, sitting side by side with the legislature. And at the end of the day, uh, the uh, entire country had to follow what uh, the conference uh, dictated it should be done. So you don't need to dismantle uh, the National Assembly or collapse the state immediately until you will then have a transition that will bring about what has been decided in the Sovereign National Conference. So you're not going to have uh, anarchy or crisis here, and the fears are largely unfounded. You don't throw away what you have until you have something that is better. That's the whole idea, and everybody is agreed that what we have now is not sustainable. Mm. It's not. 